Hi guys, I'm Ryan Holger with TEC Tube, and we are continuing our series on Ecobee 4 Pro thermostats. In this particular video, we're going to be talking about all the advanced settings, or as Ecobee calls them, the installation settings. So this is stuff that the HVAC pros should be working on and the average homeowner probably shouldn't be touching. So if you're a homeowner, shut off your computer and don't look at this. All right, let's get started. Over at the thermostat, we'll hit the little menu button on the left-hand side over here. We're going to scroll over to settings and then installation settings. So these three categories here are the more advanced things that we'll be doing. On normal projects, you won't have to touch them, you just leave them alone, they do their thing, the defaults are normally fine. But if you need to tweak stuff, this is how we do it. So the first section, equipment, wiring scenario, tells me the terminals that I'm actually using on this thermostat. You can't change it from here. If you need to change them, you need to go back and reset the thermostat and do a reinstall. But it tells me what I actually have here. That way, at least I know if the person who wired this before me wired it to, to what I actually have for my equipment. Furnace, two stage, right? So that's what I have in this particular case. If I click on that fan control in heat mode, the Ecobee stats are already controlling my stat. We already did that in the original setup. Air conditioner, two stage. Can't click on him, nothing to do with on that guy. Humidifier, uh, during original setup, we said we wanted evaporative type humidifier. We could change it to steam if we needed that. We don't. Minimum runtime delta, 5% uh, is pretty good. That means it'll turn on at a certain humidity and then drive that humidity up 5% and turn off. When it drops back down to 5%, it'll turn on, drive it back up. So that's a pretty good place. You can change it if you need to. Window efficiency. If I have the humidifier set for the mode where it tracks the outdoor air temperature for frost control protection, this tells the system how good my windows are. So whether my windows have condensation on the inside and hence frost eventually depends on how good the window itself is. So for example, on a minus 10 degree day with a single pane window, it's positive 10 degrees on the inside of the glass. However, with double pane windows on a minus 10 degree day outside, it's positive 47 degrees on the inside of the glass. I get two panes of glass plus the air gap in the middle as an insulative property. So usually for single pane windows, I tell people start on maybe around uh, setting number three. For double pane windows, you usually start on number five. And then in either case, you need to tweak this if there's gonna be any condensation forming on the windows that you vis visually see. If you tweak it, I would just tweak it one setting, wait 24 hours and see how it does. I'll put it back on three in this case. That's the humidifier on there. I can reconfigure the equipment. So if I want to make a change, um, if I decided I put new condensing unit in and I need to change from one stage to, one stage to two stage equipment, I can reconfigure the equipment here and it'd be very similar to the startup process. So check out our startup video if you haven't seen that one yet. All right, back out of equipment, then I have thresholds. So if I go under thresholds, I have numerous settings over here. We'll explain each one. Most of these, like I said, are for tweaking stuff if you need to optimize things better. First one, auto mode, enable or disable. If the consumer does not want to have the ability to have auto, you can turn it off for them. So then they'll only see heat, cool, off as their choices instead of heat cool auto off. Most people probably want it, so I'll leave it on in this case. Heat cool minimum delta. What's the minimum temperature that's gonna be enforced between the heating and cooling set points? So we can make these as close as two degrees, meaning you could have 72 for cooling, 70 for heating if you wanted to. You can make it as high as 10 degrees. So that could be like say, I could have cooling at 75 and heating at 65, but nothing in between. 10 is pretty big. Uh, I have my own house set with a six degree span on it. Um, most people are probably going to be more in the two or three range, um, but that's an adjustable setting that's on here. Compressor minimum cycle off time. So 300 seconds, which is five minutes. Um, that means that this is the amount of time that the compressor remains off between cycles. So what we don't want to have, it have happen is the equipment to get short cycled and the compressor gets beat up. We don't want it going on, off, on, off. So once it goes off, it's gonna stay off for a minimum of five minutes. That's normally fine, you can leave it there. The only time you might wanna change that, sometimes you might wanna make it a little bit longer, especially if you are having humidity control problems due to oversized equipment, which is a fairly common problem. You might wanna make it a little bit longer to force a longer run cycle, but you'll be doing that at the sake of temperature comfort in order to get more humidity comfort. Um, compressor, minimum outdoor temperature, right? So the coldest temperature I want to run the compressor at, do not run the compressor below this temperature. So if I wanted to come in and say, you know what, below 55 degrees, 
There's no reason to run this compressor. Disable cooling completely. I could do that. AC override, excuse me, AC over cool maximum, currently disabled. So if I am in the dehumidification mode of this stat, all right, so the stat normally tracks temperature, but I can also have it track humidity. I'm in the dehumidification mode of this stat, what's the maximum amount I'm gonna allow the stat to overcool? So if I have a set point, normally when you use this, you put a higher temperature set point in, say 78 degrees, and I'll allow the stat to overcool by maybe as much as three degrees is a pretty common one. So I, at 78 is my heating set point, I could overcool it as much as 75 on a humidity cool, humidity call if I needed to do that. I highly recommend you turn this feature on and three degrees is a pretty good point uh, to set it for. Heat differential temperature, 0.5 degrees. What that means, it's gonna wait a half a degree before it turns the heat on. So if your heating is set for 70 degrees, it'll wait till it's 69.5 to turn the heat on, then it'll run the heat until it gets back up to 70, and then it'll shut the heat off. Then it gets back to 69.5, turns it back on again. All right, so half a degree is pretty good. You could make it a full degree if you wanted to, that would probably be fine for some people. I would not make it more than that. If you make it say three degrees, and somebody's gotta wait, for it to get down to 67 degrees when they specifically ask for a 70 degree set point, they're not gonna be happy. So half a degree or one degree are the two that I would utilize on that. Heat dissipation time. So what that is, after the heating call is over and complete, we continue to run the indoor blower for a certain number of seconds after that. We shut off the inducer motor so heat stops going out the flue and we keep the blower motor running, at, running so any heat that's left residually in the heat exchanger is sent into the building for the occupants to use. Some furnaces have that built in, some don't. If you wanna have the thermostat take care of that, you can come in and say, you know what, for 90 seconds after every heating call, I wanna run the blower after that anyway. Heat minimum on time, once I go into heating call, what's the minimum amount of time I wanna run the heat? That helps prevent short cycling, very similar to the cooling setting we talked about previously. Cooling differential temperature works just like the heating one. How many degrees do I have to wait before the heat actually, or before the cooling actually engages? So if I have a 75 degree cooling set point, I gotta wait till 75.5 to turn it on. Once again, I would use 0.5 or one. I would never go higher than that in any scenario. Cool dissipation time. Um, I'm gonna recommend that you turn this off and not use it. If you have this on, it'll run the fan for a certain number of seconds after the cooling call. And I just told you on the heating side, that was a good thing to send the rest of the heat into the system. It's not a good thing on the cooling side. After we run the cooling cycle, we've dehumidified and my evaporator coil is wet. If I continue to run the fan, it is going to blow the moisture off the coil back into the airstream, which defeats the purpose of having all these cool dehumidification features. So I'm gonna recommend you put the cooling on zero. Do not run the fan after the cooling call is over. In fact, you want the opposite. You'd rather the fan be off after a cooling call. So put that to zero in every application in the Midwest. If you're somewhere in Arizona or something and watching this video, your life's different, your humidity situation is different, it may make sense for you. But in the Midwest, where we're at with TEC, not a good feature. Uh, compressor minimum on time. Once I go into a cooling call, what's the minimum amount of time I'm gonna leave the compressor running? Five minutes is a pretty good setting. There's not too many times you would change that. Compressor reverse staging. I absolutely love this feature. I highly recommend you turn it on in all cases. Um, so what's gonna happen in that scenario, uh, let's say for example, you have two stage equipment, which we have in this case. When I turn on, let's say I have a 75 degree set point. At 75.5, I turn on first stage cooling. If the temperature continues to rise, typically two or three degrees, depending on how we have some of the other settings here in a minute, if it continues to rise to say 77, we'll engage second stage of cooling to give you more cooling capacity. And then both first and second stage will run together until we get all the way back down to the original 75 set point. So set point 75, 75.5 turns on first stage cooling, 77 degrees turns on second stage cooling. They both shut off together when we're back down to 75. If you turn reverse staging on, which I highly recommend you do, with reverse staging turned on, what will then happen in that exact same scenario, 75.5 first stage turns on, if it gets to 77, we engage second stage, but if it drops back down to 75.5, we shut second stage off, but leave first stage continuing to run to try to get that last half a degree by himself. That gives me a longer run cycle, which improves my dehumidification ability. So I'd highly recommend you turn reverse staging on. Now, in this case, I'm gonna actually turn it back off 
if I turn it back off, I can see the next screen. With it on, the stage two temperature delta is not available to me, it's invalid. But if I turn it back to off, then I can actually adjust that. So stage two temperature delta is when the second stage actually come on, right? So do I want it to come on two degrees at a stop point, three degrees, one degree, something like that. I can't make it faster than one degree because if I do, it'll turn on before first stage, which obviously would not make sense. Or I can just leave it in the auto calculation mode. Compressor stage one maximum runtime. So this is the, the max amount of minutes that I'm gonna allow stage one to run by himself before I force it into the stage two scenario. I usually leave that on auto. You can put a timer on there if you want, but it requires you, you to know a lot about the house. Heat reverse staging, this works just like the cooling one, so I don't need to explain that. I would turn that on. And of course, if you turn it on, then the stage two temperature delta is not something that gets used. It gets automatically handled by reverse staging for me. If I leave it off, then I have access to those. So then I got stage two temperature delta, which works the same as the cooling. Heat stage one max one time works, works the same as the cooling one. Temperature correction, I can add plus or minus 10 degrees onto this guy in half degree increments. So normally these are pretty accurate sensors. Uh, they're pretty good, but if someone doesn't like the reading and they say, hey, my house says it's 72 on your stat, but it's really 74 in here. You can argue with them, you can give them specs on the stat, it doesn't really matter. In their world, it's 74. What you need to do is come into this stat and give it a two degree fake adder on there. So your 72 reading becomes 74 to match theirs. Now it's 74, it controls the 74, it believes it is 74. So you can calibrate the sensor, if you will, to match somebody else's device. Same thing on humidity correction. I can go plus or minus 10% in 1% increments to calibrate the humidity reading in this stat to match whatever other device somebody else has. Uh, thermal protection, the, min the minimum temperature reading difference between the sensors that would trigger an algorithm to ignore the inaccurate sensor reading. So if I have two sensors, which I do in this case, I have a remote sensor paired up to this guy. If they differ by a certain number of degrees, say 10 degrees, I want this to be determined that this one of these sensors is bad. This works best if you have more than two sensors. If you got three sensors and two of them are fairly close and the other one is just way out in left field, it's probably a bad sensor or a bad battery. I want to be notified about that. So that's what this would do here in the thermal protect. It would ignore that sensor. The very last one on here, installer code. If I enable that, the next time I come into these settings that we're in today, it's going to ask me to enter my installer code before I'm able to get in. So that way, if the installer gets everything all set up perfectly the way they want, they can lock that like that. So that way none of the users, the other users can, you know, accidentally change something. So I'm going to leave it off in my case, but if you turn it on, make sure you know what the password is for your installer code before you turn this actually on. All right. And the very last thing below that is the third category, test equipment. So what this allows you to do is to test the outputs of the thermostat and make sure your equipment engages like you're expecting it to. And the reason you would do this is because if you just walk up to the thermostat and you want to test the heating or the cooling, and you just jack the heating set point all the way up and say, I want it to be 90 in here, like you would have done on an old thermostat, this thermostat's going to do a really good job of trying to avoid going to second stage because stage one of heating or cooling is more efficient than stage two. So there's lots of things in the algorithm that are built in there to delay it to go to second stage. So if you just walk up to the stat and jack the set point up, you might not get second stage or you might not get it for 20 minutes. You might not want to do that when you're actually trying to test the equipment or if you're trying to set gas pressures or if you're trying to charge the unit. You don't want to do that. You want to wait. So if you come in to test equipment, you could say, okay. So I can go to this example. I'll go to the AC. I can test stage one and turn it on or I can test stage two and turn it on, right? So I can say stage two, turn it on, stage one, turn it on. And when I do that, It'll actually kick on, you probably even heard the airflow noise there, kick on the compressor of my unit and actually run. I can put on stage two, let it run, do my charging checks. Same thing with heating. I can come in here and tell it go right immediately to stage two, right? It'll just completely ignore it or go to stage one and test my gas pressure on my furnace or whatever I have and turn it off when I'm done. I can test the fan individually if I want, tell it to turn the fan on, or I can test the humidifier and tell it to turn the humidifier on or whatever other accessories I happen to install in this particular system. So thanks for watching. And remember, if you do enable that installer lockout, that you make sure you know what your code is. Otherwise, you're going to lock yourself out. So stay tuned for the next video in our, in our series here. And if you could, subscribe to our channel and click on that little bell down in the corner, and that'll help you get automatically notified when new videos are released.